Welcome back to alchemist.camp where we learn elixir by building things. Today is lesson two and we're going to make a script. Last time we had guessinggame.ex which is a normal module. Notice the .ex extension. This time we're going to make a .exs file and this is going to be called word count since it's going to count all the words in any file that you choose. So you can see .ex, .ex, .exs. With this Elixir script, we're not compiling a module. And in fact, we don't even need a module. We're just going to execute it line by line, much like you've seen maybe with Perl scripts or Python scripts or Ruby scripts or whatever kind of script. First thing we'll do is ask for a file name. So file name equals io.gets, which we used last time, gets a string of input from the user, file to count the words from. And then we'll print the file name back out to the user, io.puts file name. And let's save that and open the terminal. You may notice that some parentheses have been added. That's because in Elixir 1.6 and newer, there's an automatic code formatter. I'll check the version here, Elixir-V, it's 1.7.0. This is the second time I've recorded this video. The first time it was with version 1.5, it was about seven months ago. There have been no breaking changes. So if you already watched the previous version I recorded of lesson two, you don't need to watch this video. But this will be a higher quality video because I've had practice recording about a hundred of these now and I've also got a slightly better setup. So we can run our script with the command elixir and then the name of the file. Once again, probably just like a lot of other languages you've used. Uh, exs, file to count the words from. Let's count the words in Creator. All right, so it asked us for the name of the file and we supplied greeter.ex and then it printed it out. Looks pretty good, except for this blank line here. The reason that's there is because when I typed in greeter.ex, I also hit the return key. So that new line was saved as part of the input and we don't want a new line in the file name. So let's hit control one to go back up to the coding area and use the same function we used last time, string.trim to get rid of the white space we don't need. I'll save that and looks like, yes, it did auto wrap some parentheses and we'll run wordcount.exs again, reader.ex and this time there's no extra space. I want to point out another syntax that Elixir has that uh, is, is actually pretty useful and it also looks fairly nice. It's called the pipeline syntax and we're just going to copy this string.trim out of here and put it at the end like this. What the pipeline does is it takes whatever is to the left of it and it passes that along to the function after it as the function's first argument. If a function has more than one argument, then the first argument would come from the pipeline and then we'd still pass it the other arguments inside parentheses as usual. So saving this, it works exact. Had an extra parenthesis there. Let's try that again and there we go. It's exactly the same as it was before. The other thing you can do with the pipeline is you can put it on the next line if you run out of space and you can also chain lots of things together with the pipeline, which we will be doing today. Next thing we need to do is read the file. So we'll say the body of the file equals file.read. Last time we used file.read, which returns um, an OK or an error as well as what's in the file. This time we'll use file.read bang, which will actually crash if it can't open the file. That might sound like a bad idea, but this script we're writing has one job, and that's to count the number of words in a file. If it can't do that, it might as well just crash right away. And we'll pass in the file name. And we're not doing anything with that, uh, that file that we've read, so let's also inspect that. I hit Control Enter to pop down to the next line there. IO.inspect can actually display a lot more kinds of data than IO.puts can. If uh, IO.puts has a string or a character list, it's fine. 
but if you pass it some other types of, of data, like say you pass it a list, it can't actually put it, but you can inspect a list. And this is actually the same inspect that IEX uses. So we'll inspect the body of that file. Now it should be a little more interesting and we don't need to print the file name anymore. Get rid of that and we will rerun the function or the, the file, the script, I should say. So let's count the words from word count. Exs. We can see it's printed out the entire file as one big long string with backslash n for each of the new lines. And this is not the easiest thing to work with. And we also want to count the words. So we need to break it up by word. There is a function called string.split, which we'll use the, the same pipeline operator for. So string.split. And this is the same thing, remember, as if we type string.split, open paren, and then all of this, and close paren. Save that. This is a little bit better. We've got a list, and we could count all of these items, but we probably don't want to count an equal sign, or a pipeline operator, or this as a word. The reason it's like this is because if you only pass one argument to string.split, which we did here, the first argument is this. Remember, the pipeline operator is just like if we had done this. If you pass it one argument, then it's going to be splitting on white space. We can, however, pass it another argument to tell it what to split on. And we're going to use something called a regular expression. Regular expressions are very powerful string matching and processing utilities. They can get a bit tough to read if you make a really big one, so we'll just go step by step. We're going to use a sigil. Remember we had sigil s last time to make a string that wasn't delimited with quotes. Regular expressions are also a sigil in Elixir. Traditionally, in most programming languages, you'll put the regular expression in here. Instead of using slashes, I prefer to use braces, and that's because I less often want to match braces inside of it. And if I don't have to escape slashes, that's an advantage. The way we match a word character with a regular expression is with backslash and then W. This regular expression will split on any word character. Let's try running that. We don't want to match on word characters. We want to match on non-word characters. The way you tell a regular expression to match everything except for something is you put it inside of brackets like this and put a caret at the beginning. Now it will match everything except a word character. Much better, but we've got multiple empty strings in a row here. And let's look at what was after from. So you can see we've got a bunch of non-word characters here, and by splitting on them, that gave us a whole bunch of empty strings between the from and the string word. So we don't want to split on each of these individually. Instead, we want to split on this entire section of non-word characters. And here, we want to do the same thing. We want to split on all of these non-word characters together. The way we do that is by matching multiple non-word characters. In regular expressions, you can put a plus after anything to say match one or more of them. So now we'll split on every block of one or more non-word characters. This looks much better. We do have an empty string at the end though. Let's try this on a different file. Let's try it on greeter.ex. Let's try running word count on greeter.ex. There we go. It looks a bit better, although here we see some more problems. Looks like we're splitting what's, even though what's is one word because we hit the apostrophe. Uh, we've also got an N here after name. Let's look at the file so we can see what's going on. Hi there, what's your name? Backslash N. This backslash N is just a new line. So the way we can deal with this, and this is going to get a little harder to read, just bear with me, you'll, you'll at least uh, get a, a flavor for what regular expressions can do. So let's say we have a regular expression that matches foo, and we want it to match foo or bar. 
the way we can do that is we use a pipe foo vertical pipe bar that will match one or the other now if we wanted to match say multiple foo bars or we could say foo 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 bar foo 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 bar 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 we could do this this will match one or more of this thing and this thing is just either foo or bar so up here we can do the same thing we can say let's match either something up front or this non word character and the something up front is going to be backslash n however backslash means something in regular expressions like this backslash w means word character backslash n means a new line so we have to escape the backslash so backslash backslash n will match a literal backslash and then a literal n let's save that and give it another try with the correct file okay greeter.ex now there's no longer an n after the name so we dealt with that problem how do we deal with this apostrophe problem that we, we see popping up well that's actually even easier so inside this block that's matching anything that's not a word character we can just add more things so i'll add an apostrophe or that's a back tick let me add an apostrophe so now we're matching anything that's not a word character or an apostrophe save that And now we're catching the contractions with what's and it's. Now, as you can see, regular expressions can get a bit complex. And uh, if you're not used to them, they can be very hard to read. On the other hand, they're super useful for small things. So I think it's kind of a value judgment. In this case, we'll call it a win and continue. So we've got all of these words and a list. The next thing we want to do is count the list. Let's fire up IEX and have a look at how this might be done. So say we've got a list that's called things, and that list contains cat, contains dog, contains uh, vegetable, and it contains car. So let's inspect things. We can see that things is a list, and implemented protocols includes enumerable. When the enumerable protocol is implemented, we can use a whole bunch of functions in the enum module, and they're super useful. One of them is enum.count. Pass it things, and there we go. And of course, we could use the pipeline operator to do the same thing. There are four things. So now we can count them by just saying body pipeline into enum.count and we can print that out by piping that into io.puts or io.inspect and I don't like this name body because now that it's been split it's actually the words so we'll highlight multiple copies of this hitting control D twice and change this to words on the command line we type elixir in the name of the file to run it from IEX we can type code.load file and then the name of the file as before we'll count the words from greeter and it says 47 there's just one problem left and that is we've got this empty string at the end and we're going to have that in any file and that's because uh, of the end of file boundary we can try it on word count We've still got this annoying empty string. Uh, we could just subtract one from the result, but we can do better than that. We can use something called enum.filter, which filters a list based on a rule. You have to pass that rule in as a function. So this is a good time to look at how anonymous functions work in Elixir. So we've seen uh, normal functions where you have a def, a start, and a do, and then a corresponding end. For an anonymous function, it's just fn instead of def, and then the arguments, 
then an arrow, and then the output. So let's say x times 2, and then end. So everything happens between the fn and the end. This doesn't all have to be in one line, but it can be. So you can see this is some function that's been defined. Now if we want to use a function, it'll probably be worth a while to assign a variable to it. So we'll just call this uh, double. Double equals all of that. And now we can execute this function. But since it's anonymous, we need to use a dot before the parentheses. So double 7 gets us 14. Double 71, 142. Very good. The function we want for our filter is going to check whether if a string is empty or not. So we'll just call that empty equals function x and we're going to check if x is not equal to an empty string and end. So this need an x here. There we go. So we can run it on our own as a test. So empty on dog. Actually, I don't like that name. Let's call this not empty. And not empty the dog. Very good. And not empty on an empty string is false. Let's copy this exact function up into our file and use enum.filter. enum.filter. First argument is going to be all that stuff before the pipe. Second argument is this empty filter. Now this is kind of a long and ugly line. Great thing about pipelines is we can use them to break up our line. In fact, let's make this part into a pipeline as well. So we've got file.read as the first argument that goes into string.split. that in and we'll also put this on the next line. Save that and we'll run it again and still looking good. Now we don't need to inspect all the words of course. Get rid of that. And this empty list here is just coming from IEX. So let's get out of IEX and run this from the command line elixir word underscore count 30 excellent and we are done now let's do a quick recap we've learned how to check what version of elixir we're running we've messed around a bunch with the script we've executed it both from within iex using code.load file and from the command line, just using Elixir and then the name of it. We brushed on regular expressions, seeing both their power and how they can quickly get a bit crazy. We saw enum.filter and enum.count and used them on lists. We saw how to use an anonymous function and we put it all together into something that could be a useful component in a bigger system. Just like last time, I've got a challenge for you. This time, your challenge, should you choose to accept it, is to extend this script so that the user can count not just the number of words in a file, but so they can choose to count the number of words or the number of characters or the number of lines in a file. It's okay to use io.gets or something like that because we haven't even gone over how to parse command line arguments. There is a better way to do all this using mix and eScript, which we'll get into in a future lesson soon, but I think there's a whole lot of value in just seeing how stuff works in its simplest state without messing around with a bunch of external tooling and so on before you even feel comfortable with what you're working on. So give it a shot. You'll reinforce what we've gone over today. And if you haven't subscribed on YouTube yet, you totally should. So you get more free Elixir learning videos. And also check out alchemist.camp where there's source code for a lot of these videos. There are links to resources and everything is categorized under topics. So it's a little easier to navigate. Or if you want to just see the fire hose, then go to alchemist.camp slash episodes, and you can see just the listing of episode after episode after episode and what they cover. Till next time, code on.